Hello, everybody. Good morning. All right. Um, so we're going to kick off uh, the first talk today in the Mesos internals track. Uh, Vinod and I will be track leads uh, for today. So today, uh, for, as the first talk, we have Jay Guo from a IBM and Ben Mahler from Mesosphere. Um, they're going to be talking about hierarchical roles and multi-role frameworks in Apache Mesos. Um, going through the details about the multi-tenancy features that were added, recently added, as well as covering some of the future uh, features that are coming up. All right. How's the Go. sound? Can you guys hear me? Is my mic working? Uh, not really, no. Maybe I'll just use this. How about now? OK, there you go. All right, so we're going to talk about multi-tenancy. OK, so obviously, what's, what's the first thing we need to talk about? What is multi-tenancy? Um, pretty straightforward. It's this idea of having multiple tenants share a single software system. So an example of this is you might have something like AWS or Google Cloud, where you have two different companies, Coke and Pepsi, sharing that same system, that, that same platform. Um, if you're a single company, you might have a private cloud where you have, let's say, the engineering department and the finance department um, sharing the same platform, and maybe they, they don't want to see each other and things like that. I think the more interesting um, question here is this definition of a tenant. Um, sometimes when multi-tenancy discussions happen, people are specifically referring to you know, one specific type of tenant, like a company. But you know, how we want to think about a tenant is really, it could be any of these things. It could be a company, it could be different business units within a company, it could be teams, or it could be individual employees. And so this notion of tenancy is really hierarchical, right? You have employees, they work within teams, they work within departments, within organizations, within companies. And so we want to think of all of these things as being a, a tenant. So right now in, in Mesos, what we target with multi-tenancy is primarily using um, a single Mesos cluster within a single company. So that means you know, you're sharing a Mesos cluster across teams in the company or across employees and, and so on. Um, for different companies, at the current time, we would recommend using different Mesos clusters. And that's because in that, that use case requires extremely strong security. Um, potentially stronger isolation if you're not OK with container level isolation. Um, you need really good prevention of denial of service attacks. You don't want one company being able to affect service towards another company. And you have to, there's compliance things to deal with as well. So it's a really hard problem. And um, we don't recommend it right now, but we will make progress towards um, sharing across companies in the future. Okay, so what are some needs for multi-tenancy? Of course, we need security isolation, um, not just when it comes to making sure that different tenants don't land on the same host or, or are using containers or VMs, um, but also in terms of the API, right? Um, you might want engineering to not be able to see sales depending on what you're doing. And um, so you need good authorization and authentication to do that. Um, when you're isolating resources on the host, you know, not only do you need to do security isolation to make sure that the file system's isolated and the network and storage are also isolated, but you need performance isolation as well. You want to make sure that one tenant can't negatively affect the performance of another tenant, and that goes for all the resources that, that exist on the host. Um, another thing you need is this notion of guarantees about how many resources you can get in a cluster. Um, we do that with things like quota to give you a, guar a guaranteed amount. And we have fair sharing when you want to go over your quota. And we might introduce things like priorities and so on in the future. Um, and then you also need really good fault isolation, right? If one tenant is inducing a failure in some way, that failure shouldn't cascade into other tenants. OK, so there's also some end-to-end -end platform needs for multi-tenancy, right? If you're running a scheduler on Mesos, either that scheduler itself needs to be multi-tenant, or you need some software that helps tenants get a, a, a per-tenant scheduler, right? Um, you also need software to manage these tenants that exist in your platform. Um, and so companies have existing LDAP setups that 
you might need to integrate with, so there's software needed for that. Um, and then for compliance, you might need things like audit logging. Um, and if you're building a platform, you might want to charge those tenants for how much they're using. Um, and uh, there might be things that you need that Mesos might not tackle. Like, for example, network isolation is often done with software-defined networking, and that's usually provided by you know, a vendor or something like that. So a lot of these things that you need for multi-tenancy in a platform are kind of out of the scope for Mesos. Mesos is one piece of this, but you kind of need an end-to-end -end platform solution, like something you can build in-house or an existing one like DCOS. Okay, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about, a little more in detail about what exists for multi-tenancy in Mesos today. Um, so just as a reminder, the vision for, for Mesos is that, you know, it's this kernel of a data center operating system. And so one of its core responsibilities is, is resource management. So resource management means a few things. It means sharing resources amongst tenants, giving guarantees to those tenants about how many resources they can have, um, providing isolation of those resources, and then providing accounting so that you can tell on a per tenant basis how much people are using. So as a terminology thing in Mesos, we don't have the word tenant. We don't use that word. What exists in Mesos is this concept of a role. And that represents a consumer of a resource. And so that's the mapping here when you think about multi-tenancy in Mesos is we use these roles to capture, you know, whether it's a business unit, a team, and so on. OK, so what are some features that exist today? Well, I talked about roles. And with roles, you can get resource guarantees. Um, there's two things in place today. One is fair sharing with DRF, and the other thing is quota. Quota gives you an absolute amount of guarantee, and fair sharing is relative. And we have resource accounting to make sure that you can track how much each role is using in the system. And then we have a lot of security isolation and performance isolation. Um, I won't talk about them here, but you know, it's kind of, if you want to learn more about that, you can attend a containerization related talk. Um, and then we have uh, authentication and built in authorization as well. So this stuff is built in, um, but it's also customizable. So if you want to say integrate with a Kerberos system that you have, you could build an integration to, th to that. OK, so um, Jay is going to highlight two features for multi tenancy that um, were recently worked on. So I'll pass it to him. All right. Uh, I'm going to introduce these newly added feature, like namely uh, multi-role framework support and high roles in more details. And as Ben just uh, introduced, like uh, we uh, normally will have, for example, multiple teams sharing one marathon instance, and that marathon subscribe with uh, Mesos, and uh, these teams will launch all different application services using that marathon. But from Mesos' point of view, it's actually Mesos doesn't know that these teams like uh, because the marathon subscribe with Mesos with only one role, which we currently support. Uh, in this case, it's marathon, and so Mesos only knows that okay, there are uh, jobs running under the role marathon, but actually these teams are for example, front and back end reporting. They are all launching different uh, workload or applications. So the problem with that is you cannot enforce the uh, like a quota or reservations using with these uh, different teams like front end back end because Mesos simply doesn't know about it. I mean, one solution to that would be you can launch like sing, what like one marathon instance per team, so that Mesos can uh, and they basically subscribe to Mesos using different roles. But obviously, you don't want to do that for every team in your organization and you're adding, I mean, because tenant could be one uh, department or but also can be one individual like employee, but obviously you don't want to do that for every uh, single one tenant. So what we want to do is you can subscribe a framework to Mesos with multiple roles so that Mesos is aware of it and can allocate resources accordingly. So different teams using that marathon, a single instance of marathon, and ha can be allocated with different resources. So you can leverage like quota and reservations that are associated to the roles and to make better decisions of the resource allocation. And uh, of course, uh, you, we don't want to implement that in the scheduler, which meaning 
you need to implement all these features in every single scheduler, not only Marathon, but we want to have a unified implementation in Mesos to make such a decision. So that's basically the, the basic idea behind the multi-role framework support. And for hierarchical role support, it's, um, it's quite straightforward. Like, an organization is often hierarchical. So you don't really have front-end, back-end, report, lead at the same level. Instead, you will have, for example, front-end and back-end under the engineering department, and reports and leads under sales department. And furthermore, you probably will have like front-end running different workloads, like Rails and UI, and API login in back-end. So you see this kind of hierarchical structure should be captured by the roles as well, being that we want to, oh, we want schedulers to be able to subscribe with Mesos using this path-like syntax. So engineering slash front-end slash UI will, will depict the, uh, the, the UI uh, workload under this uh, tree structure. And uh, when it comes to hierarchical role, uh, the uh, uh, DRF algorithm, reservation quota, may be slightly different than the flat ones. For example, uh, uh, we want to enable this uh, delegation, meaning that if you allocate, if you set a quota to the team engineering front end, and that team can be able to further subdi subdivide the quota to the uh, uh, different workload, for, uh, Rails and UI, so I want to split that quota and uh, set quota for my sub-teams further. And uh, also we want uh, to uh, do the uh, authorization isolation, for example. I don't want front-end to see the siblings uh, allocation being back-end in this case. And uh, again, to combine this with the multi-role support, we want like a single instance of Marathon to subscribe to uh, different nodes in the tree being like all these uh, different path, paths, so that still in the, the whole tree can use single instance for Marathon, but to manage all the resources allocated to the whole tree. And uh, the DRF, DRF, like it's kind of straightforward, because previously it was flat, so you just compute the fair share of every node, and then sort them, and allocate the uh, new piece of resource to the uh, node with lowest share. Uh, in the hierarchical structure, uh, you simply calculate fair share recursively at each level. So uh, given the uh, resource allocation in this case, uh, we will calculate the fair share. The result will be like this. Like an inch department will take like 20% of the uh, resource comparing to the sales department. And then you recurse uh, further down to the uh, inch front end and inch back end, which take uh, like one fifth and four fifth resource of inch department. And then you recurse down, like you find the node with lowest fair share. So in this case, we go to edge first, and then edge front end. So we will allocate the new piece of resource to that node. So this is like, this is quite straightforward when you come to DRF in the hierarchical manner. And uh, the hierarchical reservation will be uh, like given such a uh, such a tree, and we set uh, we reserve resources to edge, like 100 resources in this case. And that reservation is actually shared in the tree. So it's shared among end, end front end, and end back end, something like this. And then we introduce the semantics of refinement. So you can refine the, uh, when end front end receive the resources from the reservation of end, it can further refine it. So basically call a reserve API to res reserve that piece of resource to itself so that cannot be used by the backend as the simple sibling. And uh, when it's done with it, you can just call unreserve API to return that resource to the end, which is a parent role. And uh, I want to emphasize that when you reserve a resource to end, it's a shared among the subtree. What does it mean? Basically, for example, you have a, um, a situation like this. You have eng, and you reserve resource 100 to it, and you have a framework X subscribing to it. And sub framework X will get all these 100 resources, of course. But then you decide to divide your eng team further to eng front end and eng back end, and you subscribe framework Y from Z to these two newly added teams. Then you don't, it's not guaranteed that framework X is getting all these 100 resources anymore. 
because 100 is shared among the subtree. So exactly x, y, z are sharing this reserved resources. So it's uh, so basically you don't get 100 for x anymore, but x 100 is shared by x, y, z. But normally you will have, like we said before, one single instance for marathon instance subscribing to all these different roles and get all this 100 and schedule jobs based on their uh, their roles. So this is hierarchical reservation. And uh, the, when it comes to hierarchical quota, will be uh, kind of similar to reservation. You can set a quota to eng. Again, that's shared among the subtree, like this. And uh, I want to, again, uh, emphasize that you can dedicate quota. It's like refinement. But actually, you set quota to a sub, a sub role of eng. So that guarantee is uh, dedicated to front end, so the back end won't get, uh, you, front end is guaranteed to get 40 out of 100 of the uh, quota in the subtree. But this introduces the semantics that you uh, should always set the quota to the parent role because that's shared among the whole subtree. And then further you s set quota to the sub role. So basically, uh, this in the subtree, the quota is 100. You cannot have the uh, uh, the sub sum of the uh, uh, sub roles like 40 plus 70. You cannot that exceeding the quota of the parent role, and uh, therefore you should always set the quota for the parent role and then set quota to the ch child role. So basically, you cannot do this because quota is by default is zero, and you shouldn't. You cannot, it's, it's disallowed to set quota to eng front end before setting quota to eng. And uh, similar to the reservation before, uh, if you have framework X subscribing to eng first, and uh, it's guaranteed to get uh, 100 quota resources, and then you decide to add more sub teams to eng. So you, and then at this point, it's not guaranteed anymore that X will get all the 100 resources because that's shared among the subtree. So X, Y, Z, again, will get the quota 100 resources. And uh, so to summarize it, if you still want the old behavior, like you want to guarantee some application to get all the uh, like reserved resources or quota resources, you should always subscribe that framework to a leaf row and set quota or reservation to that leaf row. And uh, so to basically to get the same behavior as previously you did, like to guarantee a certain amount of resources to that application. And uh, I'm going to hand it over back to Ben to talk about the future work and uh, roadmap. All right. So where is this stuff right now? Um, Multi-role framework support shipped in 1.3 of Mesos. Um, for hierarchical roles, it's still a work in progress. We're planning to finish it in 1.5. In 1.4, some of the work is done already, but um, quota will not work as we showed just now, so it's not recommended to use it. Um, and then, you know, after we finish this stuff, we need to integrate this into multi-tenant frameworks like Marathon or Aurora and so on. Uh, and then, you know, any end-to-end -end solutions will need to integrate this stuff as well. So I wanted to also talk about um, some upcoming work uh, that is being worked on already. Um, and the first is revocation, uh, and, the, and the second one is uh, priority tiers. OK, so um, you know, originally when, you know, in the past when we introduced resource allocation in Mesos, what we did was we performed weighted DRF to fairly share the resources amongst all the tenants in the cluster. And that's the only thing we did. Um, and we did this in a non-revocable way, which means we can't take these resources back once they're allocated. Um, and then later in time, we introduced this notion of quota. And what this did was it made our single phase allocation become a two phase allocation. The first phase was, well, let's try to satisfy everyone's guarantees that we gave for quota. And then with, with what's left, let's fairly share that as we did before. And so one of the problems with this is that in order to guarantee everyone gets their quota, we have to make sure that we leave enough room if they're not using their quota right now 
to satisfy it at a later point in time if they do want it. And so this headroom here is essentially unutilized, and there's no way for us to give that out without breaking our quota guarantees that we told people. So this hurts utilization, and what we want to do to solve that is introduce this third phase of revocable fair sharing, where what we do is we can allocate all unallocated resources as revocable, and that lets us take those resources back if we need to give it for quota to someone. Ideally, you know, in retrospect, what we had originally done was introduce just quota and revocable fair sharing, but this middle layer here would serve as a backwards compatibility layer for people who expect the old behavior, and we would allow operators to, to confine how much of this can happen or turn it off completely. Um, so that's revoc revocable resources at a, at a very high level. Um, and another thing that's been discussed is this notion of priority tiers. So for priority tiers, what this means is introducing essentially priorities in these particular allocation tiers. So for revocable fair sharing, what priorities means is that a higher priority tenant can revoke resources from a lower priority tenant whenever they like. For quota, since it's not revocable, the only thing that priority gives you there is like first rights on the resources. So if there's an outage and you need to get your core services up, those higher priority services can get the resources first and stay running, and the other lower priority quota tenants will not get their resources. So that's also priority tiers at a very high level. Um, and so just, just a reminder, you know, multi-tenancy is, is really a, a very multifaceted problem. You really need an end-to-end -end platform that's going to give you, you know, all the pieces of this puzzle that you need. And Mesos is just one core piece of that puzzle that provides some multi-tenancy primitives. Um, and that's, that's all we have. We just wanted to put this up here to thank um, contributors that have worked on this stuff so far. Looks like we have quite a bit of time, so if you guys have questions, we can take those. I guess I'll run this microphone around. All right, I'll, I'll repeat it. So it's on the stream, I guess. OK, the question was, do I know which version of Marathon or DCOS support multi-role? It's none of them do right now. It's being worked on at the current time. So um, it's possible the next release will have it. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, it's still being worked on. Yeah. So the question was how to transition to using hierarchical role. As part of the multi-role work, we also allowed frameworks to update their set of roles at any point in time. Currently, you have to resubscribe to do that, but we'll also add potentially a call so you can do this without resubscribing to Mesos. Yep. So, so the question is about this um, non-revocable headroom that I mentioned. Um, I'll go back to it. So um, if I drew a line, oh, you can't see my mouse, of course. If I, you know, this dotted line at the top here of the, of the headroom is the sum total of all the guarantees of quota that we, that we have in the cluster. And this middle line here is how much people are actually using of their, allocated of their quota right now. So if I asked for 10, there would be 10 total here. And if I only used five, there'd be an extra five that is left unused because we need to make sure that if I later want that extra five that I got a guarantee for, I can get it. Does that 
make sense? Does that answer your question? Or Okay, we, we can chat after too if you have more questions. Um, the question was, do I have any examples of, of quota and priorities? Um, definitely not for priorities. It, there's no design at the current time. There's only been discussions. Um, there is a, there's a design being worked on for revocation as, as well. And then for quota, um, the design, I think Michael is actually working on that. Um, so I don't know if we have examples right now, but um, there's going to be a design published within the next week or so for the quota part. Um, right, okay, um, we did that. Uh, so the question was, can, can we update the UI to show resource usage by role? Um, as part of the multi-role work, we did update it, so I don't know if you're running the latest version or not, but yeah, that's the plan is to display this stuff. There's a new roles tab in the UI where you can see a breakdown per role of how much is allocated, what their quota is, and so on. That is in, um, it's probably in 1.4. Oh, which is not yet released, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's almost released. question is, what's the timeline for revocation and priority tiers? Um, there's no timeline for priority tiers. The timeline for revocation, I would s say, is, I mean, the design is being worked on right now. Um, 1.5 will be in two months, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, that will be a little tight, I think. It might be maybe 1.6 or something, if I had to guess. Hardcore quota, I think, will be 1.5. I would should be, yeah. Sure, do you wanna do it or do you want me to? So the question was essentially just to clarify a little bit about how this um, hierarchical reservations work and um, yeah so I'll, I'll I can just reiterate what Jay said and and um, make sure that you understand so um, previously I wouldn't have these children here right I would just have eng engine eng and so when I made a reservation to eng of course only the eng role gets to use that now when you make a reservation to eng you're just saying that the entire eng tree is reserved to 100 resources. So we'll make sure, Mesos will make sure that 100 resources goes to that tree, but those resources are gonna be shared amongst the tenants, in, amongst the different roles in that tree. Now, I could, I could refine that reservation. I could be eng front end and I could get some of it and I could further refine it to specialize it to be only for eng front end that's this notion of reservation refinement. So I could guarantee that like, okay, I got some of it and now I'm binding it to me so that it can't be shared with all the rest of the eng tree right now anymore. And if I unbind that, it'll go back to eng. I see you nodding, so I guess I'm, it's making sense so far. And then um, what else to keep in mind? 
Um, yeah, I think does that is that. Right, so yeah, so in this case, like if you had something that you wanted to run at eng still, if that's something you wanted to do, we would recommend that you run it at eng slash default or eng slash whatever, you know, a specific role to make sure that you can bind it to that thing and it can't go to other roles. Um, you don't have to reserve to the parent in this picture. You could reserve it directly to your leaf role, but if, let's say, an operator said, I want to make sure that engineering gets this whole machine by reserving the resources, like let's say you have a public machine, right? It's exposed to a public network, and you want to reserve that for only the public network things. You could do that, and it's then shared amongst all the public network th things, and they can reserve portions of it. Is that it? That, that's kind of one use case that you can imagine. Yeah, I think to kind of add an additional point to what Jay said is, you know, if you want to use, um, if you want to use reserved resources and you are expecting those to go back to you, you should refine it to your leaf role. So in this case, like if, uh, if I'm framework Y and I get some of this engineering resources, but I know that I, I'm running an engineering front end thing, I shouldn't assume that those engineering resources are going to always be reallocated to my engineering front end thing. I should refine that reservation and make sure that it's guaranteed to come back to my leaf role. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely looked at both ways of doing it. The disadvantage of the other way of, of doing it, where like it's bound to only end here, is that you need two two kinds of reservations. You need one flavor which is a tree-like reservation, and you need another flavor which is bound to that internal node in this tree. And so I think when we were designing it, we wanted to just simplify that and say that all reservations are bound to the entire subtree that they are made on. And so, of course, what that means is we have to tell people, use a leaf roll if you want to make sure that it's it's you know guaranteed to that particular tenant Yeah, so the the question was, is a reservation tied to only like a single resource like CPU or can you make a reservation to multiple resources? Yeah, so a reservation is on a bag of resources. You can, it can be a collection of any particular resources together. Yes. Oh, th this is 100 units of some resource. Of course, in reality, this is going to be a multi-dimensional reservation. It's going to say 100 or like one CPU, two gigs of memory, 10 gigs of disk, maybe these, maybe these ports. Um, that would be a single reservation, which is on a particular agent. And there could be many of these across the agents. So uh, keep in mind that a reservation is bound to one agent. It identifies exactly these resources on this agent, whereas quota is globally I need this amount. That's the distinction between a reservation and quota.
Yep. Yeah, so this, in, the, the reality of this picture today is that if you're a tenant in phase one, you're not going to get any resources in phase two and, and vice versa. So um, that was because we didn't allow, we, this, that was because the intention was to move towards this model where to burst above quota, you had to use revocable resources. Yeah, so um, in this, what we might want to allow in this picture here is exactly what you said, where like we might allow a tenant to burst over their quota using non-revocable resources, but the current implementation doesn't allow that. So that might be something that we allow in the future when we do this work. Uh, I don't, I don't, the question was, do we have to do that after we do revocable by default? I don't think so, no, but it's just, that's what the current implementation is, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, we, we could do that today. We just, we also need to make sure that we don't, um, we don't, like the, the difficulty there is, Today, if I get non revocable resources, I don't know if it's from my quota or from the fair sharing that's happening. Um, and so we want to improve that as well. We want to be able to tell someone like, hey, here's the quota for your tenants in your scheduler. And so with that knowledge, you know what's going on. Um, and here's maybe how much they're allowed to burst over their quota or how much they're allowed to use like what their fair share is of revocable resources as well. So we want to give all that information to the scheduler as part of this work. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, today, quota is not very usable, and that's what we want to improve. Yeah. All right. Um, any last questions? Going once? No? Okay. Thank you.